Hey guys, so today's uh, session I'm going to cover uh, creating a publishing target inside Sitecore. Uh, this is a great uh, a scenario for if any of you are working on creating a production environment. What you might want is an environment where you have a CM and you have some sort of preview server as well as your production server. So uh, in order to set that up, you could have one CM that runs off the master database and then you have the ability to publish not only just to web which will be uh, in this instance the web database will actually be your preview server or database and then you also have another option to publish to production or production database that is basically just another web database um, so you could theoretically have multiple uh, web databases to create um, that you could publish to um, I will note that I have already gone ahead and created a web database in my example project. Um, if you want to do this, all you have to do is either take a, a fresh um, file, file download of whatever version of Sitecore you are wanting to use. And then inside the databases project or folder, there is a web database attachment file. Uh, you can just attach that to your SQL instance and then you would just instead of calling it underscore web, you'd want to call it underscore uh, target name or in this example, it would be underscore production. Um, another option you have is you can just create a backup of your web database currently that you're running and then just uh, restore that database again, but make sure to restore it as now underscore production or underscore whatever your publishing target is. Uh, that you want to create. So the first step to this is creating a connection string. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up this this config file, uh, connection strings. This is outside the normal Sitecore patch uh, logic because this is a uh, not this uh, connection strings are not uh, elements that show up in a web config that fall within that Sitecore element. Uh, so you can't patch it. So you can go into your uh, websites folder and then the app config and you can just uh, make changes directly to your connection strings. So another thing I'm gonna show in a, a few weeks possibly is uh, how to create patch configs and also how to create transformations. So you could create a transformation in your solution for connection strings and you could have connection strings for your local environment, then some for your production environments, maybe your if you have a test or a UAT server, um, you could have additional connection strings. So you can manage those within source, site, uh, source control, um, whereas what I'm doing right now is not within source control. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and open this with Visual Studio Code. Okay, and I'm just gonna create a new uh, configuration. As you can see, I only have the web, master, and core currently. And I'm just gonna call this production. Because when people publish to this this database, it will be what rep is represented in represented represented in production. All right, and just close that connection string. All right, so that part is now done. Um, now I'm going to need to create a, um, a patch config that allows me to um, define this database. So the best way to do that is to actually go ahead and um, find a the patch config that currently exists that defines these and just make some changes to it. So to do that, um, I'm actually gonna just make changes to the Sitecore config. Just open that real quick. And I'm gonna look for databases.
whatever it is. So the, the really easy way to do this is just, is just make a copy of the web, web, uh, web node here. So I'm just gonna copy that. And you'll notice that it sits underneath databases and I believe just site core. So, um, so if you want to patch it, it's going to be a pretty easy patch. Let's look at there. So there it is. Um, okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to here, back to my, uh, my project and I'm going to create a new patch config for this. I'm going to call it uh, environment.config. You can call this whatever you want. You can call it databases if you want. Um, I like to keep uh, environment specific uh, settings in one big config, um, but your, your opinion can vary. So, So I'm just going to create a site core. I'm just going to paste that in. I forgot to put in databases. And I'm also going to need to uh, modify this slightly. Let's give it proper spacing. Um, go but go over to the sites config and I will just grab this real quick So it knows how to patch this So that's pretty much all you need um, Actually one one final step is you should name this production not web So now I'm going to go ahead and just publish this change So where, what am I trying to do? I'm trying to go to sitecore slash admin slash show config. Um, this is the first time I've actually done a patch config. So um, basically that URL allows you to see what the final outcome of all your patches, et cetera, would be. Um, when I do the course on patches and transformations, I'll show more of that as well. But I'm just doing this so I can see if the changes I made are, are there in the right place. So I'm gonna go to databases and now you're gonna see core, you're going to see master, you're going, and, and another thing to note is you notice that the configs when I was looking at them before were much smaller. Now this has been replaced. Some of the uh, items allows for dynamic includes. So these are bringing in additional um, things. So uh, you'll see web, and now you should see production. So it's kind of down here at the bottom. Uh, we could have uh, patched it in above a certain element, but I don't think it matters. So, um, so now we can go ahead and start configuring the Sitecore side of things to, to, to give you the option to uh, publish to a specific publication target. Uh, what you've done so far is just giving it, once you've once you trigger this custom uh, Sitecore item that allows you to publish to a target, a, a new target, this the stuff we just set up will give it all the back-end knowledge to basically, when you publish to it, it knows how to connect to it, how to do certain things with that, that database, etc. Whereas what you're building, what we're going to do now is just giving that option inside the Sitecore interface. So I'm going to go ahead and log in. And now what I want to do is go to the master database, which I already have selected. I'm going to go to the content editor. If you loaded up the launch pad, you could just click on content editor as well. And now I'm going to go down to the system area. And then you should see now an area called publishing targets. Right now you'll see that the only one defined is internet. We'll just go ahead and click on this. What I want to do is not change target database, but what I want to do is rename this. So I'm going to give this a different name. I'm going to call it preview instead. 
just to get make it more uh, distinguishable. Also, another thing I want to do is, um, so you have this additional option called a preview publishing target. Uh, basically, what this does is if you have workflow enabled in your instance, which I'll one day show a, a tutorial on workflow, um, it this it, if you set this option, uh, you can publish workflow items that aren't in the final state. Whereas in most instances of uh, publishing targets, you have to have it in the final workflow state for in order for you to publish it. So that's something to keep in mind. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, create a new one, a new publishing target by clicking on publishing targets and adding a new item. And I'm gonna just call this production. Click okay. And I will call this production or uh, assign the target database to production, but I'm not gonna click this additional option. And that's pretty much it. One thing I will note is your master or your CM environment is going to need to have multiple publishing targets defined, whereas your individual uh, instances, such as your CD nodes that you're gonna set up in your production environment, do will only have one publishing target defined, and ideally you could you should leave that just as inter internet or leave it as the web database um, or the web connection string because this all this is pointing to is a connection string and it's not pointing necessarily to a um, the actual database. So the reason I say that uh, you shouldn't necessarily change even though the database itself in the CD nodes are going to be using a uh, whatever your instance name underscore production. Uh, I would still name that connection string web. Uh, the reason for that is that there's a lot of other configs that run off these uh, these IDs that you set in your connection strings, and web is a very big one. So if you rename that to production in your production environment, now you're going to have to go in and change all your uh, patch configs to use uh, production instead of web. So just something to keep in mind uh, when you're setting this up. You might run into a scenario where you want multiple publishing targets in your production environment. In that case, uh, you would you you you'd probably end up in a scenario where you have to change these um, these connection string IDs to in your settings from one ID to another. So. But for, the, for a typical CM, CD, CD, CD environment, you're going to probably want to leave it just as web in your production environment. Um, but on your CM, you're going to have a preview and a production if you choose to. You don't have to. Um, but so, yes, that's, that's pretty much it. So let's uh, kind of show this in a uh, show this working. So I can't really show you um, that, you know, I don't really have another instance running with it using the, uh, the production database, but um, what I can show is just showing you that there is another option for publishing things to another publishing target. So what I'm gonna do is just do publish, publish site, and now you see that there is actually two publishing targets. I have a production, production, and I have preview web. And the name here is just the name of the display name. And this is just the name that you defined as the uh, connection string ID. So uh, since the preview server is still using the web connection string and the production is using the production connection string, it's kind of redundant. It shows names twice, but it, it that's pretty much what it means. So I'm gonna select both targets and I'm just gonna click publish. And so it's going to publish everything to the web database first, and then it's going to publish everything to the production uh, publishing target database. And that's it. It, it basically says it's succeeded. Uh, since I created a backup of my web database and created a new production database, there wasn't much to publish. Um, there was a few slight variations, but um, just something to you know, keep in mind when you're publishing to multiple targets. Also, another thing you want to keep in mind when you're publishing to multiple targets is that you're going to be publishing a lot of items. So 
Um, it, I mean, you're basically doubling the process that you were originally. So you were originally publishing only at 4,000 items. Now you're going to be publishing uh, 9,400. Um, also, you know, it's important to let your your uh, your content managers or content editors know this, uh, know this process, know the difference between two different publishing targets and what the difference are is. Um, but you know, so if, if they just create a new page um, and they want to see what it looks like, they can they should just only publish to the web, not the production. And then once they've confirmed or it's gone through the proper workflow. Um, you can publish it to production as well. Um, keep in mind if you're in, if you're publishing through a workflow um, and you try to publish something and you've set one to allow for a, a non-final state uh, workflow item to be published versus a not a, a publishing target that does not have that option. When you try to publish it, even if you publish it to both targets it's going to only publish to the web or the one that has that option enabled versus uh, it would not publish to the production environment because it's not in that final workflow state. So, all right, uh, hopefully that was helpful. Uh, if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to me and uh, yeah, have a great weekend.